So today we'll be reading Sri Sri Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse number 76. O Varoru, nicely tied girl. When will the ocean of my bliss expand? When I see you being decorated with flowers by joyful Krishna, the victor over Aristasura in a kunja with many blooming flowers and humming bees on the shining bank of your lake. O Varur, nicely tied girl, when Will the ocean of my bliss expand when I see you being decorated with flowers by joyful Krishna? Italian language, can you please? Mute. When will the ocean of my bliss expand? When I see you being decorated with flowers by joyful Krishna, the victor over Aris Asura in a kunja with many blooming flowers and humming bees on the shining bank of your lake. In the previous verse, Shiragunath perceived the water sports of the divine couple. After playing in the water of Radhakun, Radha and Mohana and their girlfriends come back on the shore and the manjaris anoint them with oil, massage them, bathe them again, arrange their hair and change their clothes. In this verse, Mohana will single-handedly decorate Sri Radha in a kunja on the bank of Sri Radha Kun. How incomparably beautiful is the bank of Sri Radha There is a sweet kunja there, flanked by enchanting trees and wines, bearing so many different kinds of blooming flowers. that are surrounded by swarms of thirsty humming bees. In this kunja, Arista Jai Krishna will dress Swamini. Oh, nicely tied girl. 
Arista Jai will expand the ocean of my bliss by decorating you with flowers. Radhika's maidservants don't like all kinds of bliss. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj defined the nature of the happiness of the Gopikas as follows. Before we hear what Krishna Das Kaviraj said, glorifying the nature of happiness of Sakis, maybe we can try to say and share something what we heard already. So, in many verses, as we can see, there is a lot of separation. But in these words, we can see and hear and feel so many joy and bliss, which is present in all in everyone which is who is in, engaged <clears throat> in this beautiful lila. So happiness is the one of the most powerful ingredients for the life. When person doesn't feel happiness, he is very depressed, morose, he doesn't want to leave. And actually, Bhaktino Thakur is saying that soul cannot live without happiness. If there is no any happiness which can soul feel through the body, soul wants to leave that body. So this happiness is the essence of existence of the soul and also we can see, I'm repeating Prabhupada's words, it's not my concoction. And this happiness is the essence of conditioned soul. Result of this Two kinds of happiness are different because when conditioned soul feels joy, bliss, happiness through the fulfilling of his desires and senses, ultimately it will come disappointment soon or later. But when the soul feels happiness, this kind of happiness is eternal and brings soul to the source of all happiness. And this is the transcendental love. So, I made this small introduction because when I was reading this verse, first of all, I always hear Gurudev who wants to say something about these words. Say something. What's coming to you when you hear these words? Many things are coming, of course. And devotees are free to share their feelings and but somehow i felt to share 
this feeling which Raghunath is feeling, I am want to connect with his feelings. And in these words, he is very openly is talking. I want to drown this ocean of bliss. And not only to drown, I want that my bliss expand. But not for myself. And this is the difference. Not for my benefit, not for my welfare. I want that my bliss become ocean of bliss and expand because I want to see you, O Varoru, O Rade, how your lover, also in very blissful state of heart, very joyful, Mohan, is trying to decorate you. This is the bliss and happiness which I want to witness and also to feel. Because the happiness of Yugalakishore is the happiness for Radha's maidservants, also for the Sakis, but we are more focused on Radha's maidservants. And through this bliss in the heart, happiness in the heart, Raghunath is addressing Varoru, Radhika like Varoru, nicely tied girl. He sees Radhika's form in his Sadaka wish and also because he is meditating and he sees directly her form, beautiful form with tight, nice tights in his Swarupa wish. So in both cases, in Sadaka wish or Swarupa wish, Raghunath is drowning in Radhika's sweetness. And if someone is drowning in Radhika's sweetness, he must be happy, he must be blissful, he must be joyful. Even if there are some opposite feelings, it's also rasa, brings juice for relishing. So in his Sadakavesh and in his Swarupvesh, he is addressing Radhika O Varoru. In Sadakavesh, when there is no Lila, he is meditating deeply in the Radhika form and also in her qualities and Lilas. And he sees Radhika here in this addressing. He says, Varoru, I see you, how you are nice, how you are beautiful. And your ties, tights are very, very nice. So deeper meaning of this is that he is glorifying Radhika in her mature Kishori age. He is not glorifying Radhika in the beginning of teenage years. He is glorifying Radhika and meditating Radhika on Kishori age when Radhika's tides are nice, a little bit broad, her waist is tiny, her breasts are hard, not soft, hard. Because in that age of 14 years, 
he completely took the form which is so attractive for Mohan. Because that form of Radhika will attract more Mohan the most. He will be completely Mohan, chanted with her Varoru form. And he is always meditating on Radhika in this Kishori age. When he is chanting her, her name, he is meditating actually on Kishori. And this Kishori is the goal of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas to meditate and to serve this beautiful Varoru Kishori. Raghunath is opening here his heart what he, how he is looking at Radhika and how she is looking in reality. So we, we are very fortunate that someone is describing Radhika in such a details. For example, in this verse, her beautiful, nice tights, which gives Krishna so much pleasure in different lilas. In different lilas, lilas, Krishna is uh, chanting with Radhika's tides. He is kissing her tides, embracing her tides, and so on and so on and so on. Because behind every addressing of the name are many, many unlimited lilas. And devotees want to relish not only the name of Radhika, they want to relish her beautiful form, elegant form. And every detail, or detail, I don't know in English, detail on her beautiful form. And wants to stay with their minds and hearts as much as they can, they feel. They don't want to jump. And this is the reason why we should read all these verses very slowly with relishing mood and allow ourselves to simply meditate on Varoro with nice, tight Radharani. Then immediately what will happen Devotee would like to increase the ocean of his bliss. He wants to increase the ocean of service to beloved Radhika. But not only Radhika, Manjari wants to see how Krishna is serving. And this kind of service is giving him enormous, indescribable, unbelievable joy. And Rasamai read, Rasamayi, would you like to read again? In the middle of paragraph, there is a sweet kunja. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. There is a sweet kunja there, flanked by enchanting trees and wines, bearing so many different kinds of blooming flowers that are surrounded by swarms of thirsty humming bees. In this kunja, Arista Jai Krishna 
will dress Swamini. Oh, nicely tied girl. Over. Who can see Radhika like Varoru? Her lover and maid servants. This is special privilege for lover and the maid servant to see Radhika with the beautiful, nice tights. And to see how Krishna is dressing her, sometimes very confused. Sometimes he is trying to concentrate, but he is losing concentration because these nice ties are so attractive and sweet for him. And all this is happening in a sweet Kunja. There are some ayurvedas. The qualities of this Kunja. We should meditate also on the qualities of Kunja. Because this is Vrindavan. And this is Kunja is just around Radha Kunja. And after water pastimes, like Baba explained, pastimes are moving to some unknown kunja. It's not mentioned the name of kunja, but if we read descriptions of kunja, we can see that this is the general description that is so beautiful in all kunjas is the same situation. So, why I'm speaking this? Because when devotee receives Siddha Pranali, he is re receiving his address, his kunja, his home. He knows where he belongs. And he is serving in this kunja trying to bring Radha and Krishna in it, or waiting that they come in this kunja, and is prepara preparing the kunja for their pleasure and joy. So our own, we need mercy of our own kunja. We need mercy of so many Vaishnavas, associates of Radha and Krishna. We need mercy of Rindavan, and we, we need mercy of dust, of grass. But we also need the mercy of our own Kunja. Because in that Kunja are the flowers, are the bees, are the cuckoos, birds, grass, waterfalls. In every kunja is like this. And we need mercy of that beings, living beings, eternal living beings in our own kunja. Because kunja is not the place like in material senses, um, in mat material dimension, Kunja is living entity. Everything is Chinmaya Rasa, isn't it? In Vrindavan. So everything has Rasik consciousness. Rasik consciousness. Everyone and movable and unmovable living beings are conscious. And not even conscious, they are drowning in their own rasas. So when devotee meditate, 
on Radha and Krishna, putting them in his own kunja to serve them. He also needs kunja kripa. And everyone who is living in that kunja So this point catch my attention and my heart. I wanted to share with you. Because meditation, deep meditation, is the only solution. Through the bhajan mind can be happy, satisfied, balanced and become very tender, sensitive. And immediately through this kind of bhajan, heart will become slowly and slowly purified and also become able to receive all the fruits which Radhika Hermanjaris can give to us. And bhajan is something which is preparing the mind, but also is bringing the mind and heart directly yeah. on the, in the name, in the form, in the qualities and lilas of our beloved Shimateradara. Then a oh, nicely tied girl, Ovaroru, oh, will never go out from our heart and our mind. Whatever we are doing, then is bhajan kriya. Smoothly, softly, lovingly, and joyfully. Radhe Radhe. Please add, share something. It came to me. And I, sorry, I couldn't resist. Dad. Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj defined the nature of the happiness of the Gopikas as follows. When the gopis go to see Krishna, they do not desire happiness. And this increases their happiness millions of times. They feel a million times more happiness than Krishna feels when he sees them. They are not looking for their own happiness. And that exactly increases their happiness. There is only one explanation for this paradox. The joy of the gopis lies in Krishna's happiness. The gopis think Krishna obtained so much pleasure by seeing me. This thought makes their bodies and faces 
Blossom. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilina 4. When Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. <laughs> but, sorry, and when both Radha and Krishna are happy, the Sakis are happy. But when Radha Rani comes out as the best, then the Kinkaris are happy. I repeat one more time. When Krishna is happy, then Radha Rani is happy. And when both Radha and Krishna are happy, the Sakis are happy. But when Radha Rani comes out as the best, then the Kinkaris are happy. <laughs> so we can see here the three types of Bhava. When Krishna is happy, then Radharani is happy. This is Radha Bhava. When both of them, Radha and Krishna, are happy, Samasneha are happy. Samasneha Gopis Sakis are happy. But when Radharani comes out as the best, then Kikaris are happy. So this is a Manjari Bhav. So Baba, in one sentence, put it uh, three different bows. Radha Baba, how Radhika feels Krishna happiness, how Sakis are feeling Radha and Krishna's happiness, and how Manjaris feel Radhika's happiness, Radhika's victories, sorry. And next sentence, please, Rasamay, it will conclude. I see now, yeah, it will conclude this King Karibav. When Rasa Maya Sham expertly serves Swamini by decorating her, the ocean of King Kari's bliss expands. This is final siddhanta, final conclusion. When Manjari see how Krishna is engaged in serving Radhika, there is no limit of their bliss and happiness. And they like him only because of that. Because he likes their Swamini. Siddhanta, conclusion, yes. So, we can see this Manjari Bhav, like Bhavola Sarati, many times we heard it, and many explanations are here, isn't it? Jainandaji, Gauravani, Sunitiji, other devotees, they explain so many times repeating the words of Gurudev and our Acharyas. And again, we are coming to the same importance of proper understanding what is Manjari Bhav or Bhavola Sarati. Maybe Jayanandaji can explain <laughs> again, please. <laughs> I don't want to push anyone, sorry. 
I'm not giving nice. anyone instruction. Please help me, you know. <laughs> so, by the mercy of Moranga Sundaraji. And so, Saki Gopis is attention is going to Krishna. And the three type of say gopis, Bishama Sneha Gopi, who is like Krishna more than Radhika. Another one is Sama Sneha Sakis, Lada and Mohan, both equally like sometimes little maybe like radical but the summer means almost same and rada uh, adik sneha so they likes rada more than krishna and this rada adik sneha gopi has Babo Ura Sarati. Sometimes I say, eh, Unna to Jagasa. So to, today I was reading one book, a eh, couple <laughs> And then he mentioned Manjari Baba is Lada Prema. Because Manjari uh, is center is Radharani. So if Radharani pleased and Manjari is very happy. And Radharani is Krishna, you know, concern is Krishna. Radharani is Krishna consciousness. So, Radharani is always thinking Krishna's pleasure, Krishna's happiness. And then if Krishna, ha Krishna feel happy, and then Radharani will be happy. And then Radharani, or Radharani and Mohan happy, then Saki and Manjari is happy. So this Radha Prema, who is center is Radha, or Radha's Mohan, not my Mohan. So this is uh, Radha Dasi. This is previous age or before Mahaprabhu. Uh, nobody gave to this Baba. Only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave this Baba Urasa Rati. He's enjoying Radha Baba because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Radha's mood and Radha's kanti, body efforts. And after enjoying Radha Baba, so he was thinking, okay, this is so nice. I want to distribute this Baba. So he distributed, especially he trust Rupa Manjari. And uh, I may say, like Rupa Manjari and uh, Lati Manjari or Torashi Manjari. So they expand this feeling. And uh, this, we are leading Virapax Manjari. This is. Uh, First devotee 
who is following the Dupa Manjari. So that Dupa Goswami, Dupa Manjari cannot teach how they meditate. But the student or disciple of Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, or friend, he can show how to meditate, how to do this. So therefore, this Babo Urasarati, is especially this Raghunadas Goswami, Virapaks Manjari, I may say, fully described by the mass of Raghunathan Das And Radha's, Radha's glorification, also this Babu Rasarati, also mentioned Radha Rasa Sudhaniji. Especially Anandas Babaji Maharaj's book is fully described. So this two book is like a most important book for us who is practicing Radha Dasi or try to get Babo Urasa Radha. Thank you very much. Accompanied by their maid servants, Swamini and Sham enter into a sweet dressing kunja, which is full of blooming flowers that are surrounded by humming bees. Swamini, staring at Mohana's face, asks, Who will dress me today? Mohana says, Today, I will do it. Just order me. Swamini gives her consent with a frown of her eyebrows. All right, you do it. In this way, she gives herself away. What an incomparable service to her beloved. Considering Bhava and Rasta, Bhava is the worshipper and Rasta is the worshipped. Sri Radha is the empress of full Bhava. And Krishna is the emperor of full rasa. Because Sri Radhika is the supreme worshipper, Aradhika, she is known in the Puranas and other scriptures as Radhika. No one knows how to worship like her. So, Gonaga Sundaraji. Please. So, this is uh, interesting. Considering Baba and Rasa, Baba is a worshiper, and Rasa is a worship. This is generally speaking, but uh, some specific phrase 
。だいけ、肉んじゃ。煮ぶりって肉んじゃ。だいけ、ヒアインブリンダーバン。だいけ、セーバくんじゃ。This completed opposite. Baba is worship, the worship. Rasa is the worship. In other words, generally speaking, Krishna is worshipped, and Radharan is supreme worship. But in the In Nikunja, or Nibrit Nikunja, sometimes they change the position. Krishna is the worshiper. Radharani is, is worshiper.、Uh, Radha, uh, Krishna is, is the worshiper. Radharani is the worshiper. So, this This changing situation, especially someone who is Baba Urasarati, someone who is man, has Manjari Baba, they please so much. Because Manjari is, likes to hear or see Lara Nani's highest position. So this is very Interesting. This is usually only someone who has this Babo Rasarati or like、uh, some Goswamis, they could describe this matter. And、uh, some Vishama Sneha person, they don't like it. What are they talking about? <laughs> But we like it. We love this. Story and this Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anandaji. It was a very nice point. You made it and you noticed actually in this commentary of Baba. Yes, it's constant competition between Baba and Rasa. Who will serve whom? <laughs> and sometimes Baba is serving Rasa, and like you said, and Rasa is serving. Baba. And it's very nice that here in everything is going on in this Kunja without Sakis. Only Manjaris witnesses this. And only with Manjaris, Radha and Mohan can be so free to ex- always compete in exchange of their own love. Because when Baba is mixed with Rasa, he's always Ananda. Ananda for the both lovers, but also Ananda for the maidservants. And also for us, Sadakas. <laughs> This is also, we can relish. Some small drops of this anarta,、uh, Ananda, sorry. And because of the mercy of these great words, golden words, Mahavanis of our Acharyas, who open their hearts to show us what is going on in their hearts. So we can also, if we are fixed in our Manjari Bhav, we can relish and relish and relish and relish. All these descriptions. And on the screen of our mind and heart, it will be very vivid. And in that way, we can relish through the years. So it's so beautiful that sometimes you said, Jananda, I don't want to repeat it. I, I'm repeating for myself, you know. <laughs> yeah. We should learn how to taste. That's the point. This is our sadaka. We should learn sadhana. We should learn how to taste 
and someone gives you a spoon of honey. And we just put in the mouth and say, okay, okay. Next, sweet. No, we should learn how to taste. To take this spoon and just lick a little bit with the tongue. And allow that this sweet honey nectar explode in our mouth. Then we can have realizations. If we are just jumping from, from one to another, to another, to another, to another, we will never go so deep in the taste of honey. So we should learn how to taste, how to digest this beautiful bhava, rasa, ananda, true bhava, lasa, rati. <laughs> Radhe Radhe. <clears throat> I just thought it. Everything is about um, association, right? So for us, this association is very important. So for Krishna, the association of Radharani and the Kinkaris is very important. Because how he could go out of his Mahava or his feeling that he is Rasa Vaisaha? How it's possible? Only by the association of Radharani and the Kinkaris he can come out of this rule and change. And this is what the Mandris want to see and they are working on. Because Radharani is most satisfied when Krishna is forgetting his position. He's so, so in ecstasy that he is forgetting his usual position and is taking the other position. And that's why they are all so happy actually. Because he loves that, but he cannot consciously change it. He needs the association of Radharani and the Kinkaris. So everything is association, not only for us, actually. No one knows how to worship like her. Mohana single handedly decorates Swamini in a kunja on the bank of Shamakund that is filled with buzzing bees. He seats his beloved on a jeweled throne and sits himself on her pedestal in order to be able to decorate her with handmade floral ornaments. The kinkaris pick different kinds of flowers and bring them to Krishna, who measures the size of his plant ornament with his hand and imbues them with rasa through his rasika touch. We can see exchange of love. Krishna is touching the plants, the flowers, and through this touch, he infuses these flowers 
with his prema, his love for his beloved. He is able to do it because Radhika empowered him through her love. When she touched him, she is, he is feeling Mahabhav. He is completely in ecstasy and becoming endless ocean of rasa, full of waves. So when he also touches the flowers, he is touching the flower with his own love. Because it's not the question of flower to decorate Radhika. It's the point is to decorate Radhika with his love. This is the garland which Krishna wants to offer Radhika with the help of Manjaris. And they are very happy, like Goravani said, to see him how he serves out of love their beloved Swami. So Rasa, like Jayanandaji said, is serving both. It's amazing how. Sorry, you wanted to go on. So no, 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 no. It's amazing. I, I was thinking why he's measuring. He is loving Radharani so much. He has to know the size. But why he's measuring? He is measuring <laughs> with his hands. He wants to touch her all the time again and again and again. And he is trying to find some kind of outly uh, reason? reason. Excuse. Some excuse to touch. <laughs> so whatever is there, he is using this opportunity to touch her. And then this ecstasy, he is also distributing. Like Goranga Sundara said, so wonderful. This is a sick sharing <laughs> with Sajatya devotees, with the same feelings, same goal, same bhava, without so much philosophy. <laughs> Just sharing the hearts. And reading also is important. Rasamai will touch our ears with her loving words. Swamini sits down on her jeweled seat and lets her feet oscillate next to the pedestal while Arista Jai personally manufactures the floral earrings and places them on Swamini's limbs. Why does Tulasi remember Krishna's victory over the Arista demon in this text? It was after Krishna killed the Arista demon during his manifest pastimes that Radha Kunda became manifest in order to preach the confidential glories of Priyaji. There is no place in the Vraja Mandala like Radha Kunda where Krishna enjoys 
so freely and confidentially with his Priyaji. We are celebrating Radha Kund a few days before official appearance of Radha Kund. Why? Because we are celebrating Radha Kunda every day. We don't have to wait Kartik to celebrate Radha Kunda. It's not our Vrata, it's our life. We are not giving the vow to celebrate Radha Kunda for one day, one week, or one month. We want to celebrate Radha Kund because we are depending on that celebration. Because Krishna wants to celebrate Radha, Radha Kund. And that celebration and glorification, he is glorifying her beloved. This is the meaning of appearance of Radha Kund. To celebrate, to glorify the love of Shimati Radharani. So, Devotees who are in the mood of Manjari Bala, they want to celebrate and glorify Radha Kunda every minute during the year, 24 <laughs> 7, like Gurudev said. And we are fixed in our Bhava. We cannot stop. We, every day we can glorify Radha Kunda because through the glorification of Radha Kunda, automatically we will glorify all other Lilas. We will glorify all different names, qualities, and forms of our beloved Radhika. Oh, Varoru, you are Varoru on Radhakun. You are not Varoru in the house of your mother Kirtida. You are a little girl, but you are Varoru on Radhakun. You are a teenage girl mature teenage girl with your teenage boyfriend. <laughs> Krishna is taking also this teenage age up, up to 15 years. Because in this age he can to the utmost he can relish this Madhurya or Sringar Rasa, loving is change with Shimata Radharani. Age is important because through the age, all the bhavas, all the emotions can burst out. So when someone is in teenage, <laughs> teen age, then all emotions are completely wild. No one can stop it. And in Mathura and Dvaraka, Krishna is older, actually. He is taking the form of 16-year-old boy. But in Raja, he wants to stay like Dira Lalita. 15, bus. <laughs> Because I can relish it. This is how he is thinking. And Radhika also wants to stay on that because through this age, through this form, my form in this age, I can give him all pleasure which he can imagine or better to say can't imagine. And this is the Upasan meditation for Gaudiya Vaishnava, who all understand who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. What is the goal, like Jayananda Ji explained to us, of appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? This is our meditation, Kishori Kishore. Because they are blooming in their youth. Kishor, Kishor, Varor, Rasika Sheik, who is serving Radhika. 
Yeah. So we should learn how to relish. And I'm so helpful to the devotees to helping me to relish. Our Gurudev is trying to learn, to teach, sorry, to teach us, to teach me how to relish. It's not going automatically in one sense. But if I open my heart, then it's going like a stream. Jai Shri Radha Kund. This Radha Kund we want to bath. This is the bathing in Radha Kund. Through the words of those who are already bathing. Even we, misfortune persons who are living in this creation, Europe or wherever can bath in Radha Kund. And this is the special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Raghunatha, Rupa Goswami, and all beautiful, nice acharyas. But we should learn how to bath from the distance directly in Radha Kund. <laughs> With the heart and mind. Then there is no difference in the space and the time, geography, or dates. Today's appearance day of Radha Kund. Are you glorifying it? No, I glorify yesterday. I glorify every day. I will glorify tomorrow. <coughs> I cannot live without glorifying Radha Kund. And this is the, why I'm talking it. Because the Kartik is every month for someone who is Vrajavasi. Every day is like this. Otherwise, we will come in the trap of Vaidhi Bhakti. Oh, today, in this hour, starts appearance day of that and that. Okay. And now, today, in this and that hour, it's finished. Next one? <laughs> no. I'm <laughs> sorry. Right. Now I understood where you have to bed, take bath to get everlasting youth. Fresh water is flowing in Chamakund, always fresh, never gets old. So if we bathe there, we will stay young forever. Just a little transcendental joke. Jai Shri Radhi. This is transcendental. True. Actually. Thank you. Thank you, Baya. Although Krishna is such a great hero to defeat a strong and wild demon like Arista, he cannot protect himself against Shiradika's delectable beauty. <laughs> He can kill thousands of demons, millions of demons. And who cares about it? Because he is completely victim of Radhika's beauty. <laughs> he is conquered by her love. And he enjoys to be conquered by her love. That. Rasa Raja Shri Krishna is greedy 
for rasa. Therefore, he serves Mahabhava. Tulasi just stands there watching Nagara's expert service and floating in an ocean of rasa. With the blink of her eyes, Swamini tells Tulasi, Tulasi, aren't you doing anything? Tulasi replies with her meaningful glances, You found a good decorator now. Do we still have to serve you? Let us just float in oceans of bliss, seeing you being served like that. Mohana now stands up on Radhika's pedestal and stands in between her thighs. Swamini experiences his touch. Mohana made seven thin gardens and now he wants to tie them behind Swamini's neck, but the strings break. Seeing this, Mohana restrings them and keeps his face next to Swamini's face. Looking over her shoulder, her left shoulder, to see whether he ties the strings properly or not. Normally, the moon and the lotus cannot be seen together. But now, the blue lotus, Mohana's face, is seen next to the moon, Radhika's face. There is no bounds to the bliss. When Tulasi sees this, she feels the ocean of her spiritual bliss expanding. Tulasi calls Swamini Varuru or nicely tied girl. Mohana stands between Radhika's thighs to hang a garland on her breast. Swamini is little scared so she tries to press her thighs together and in this way she breaks another string of the flower garland. Mohana stays between Varoru's thighs restringing the garland and hangs it on her again. Tulasi carefully watches so that she can learn this service from Mohana and she can remind Swamini of this pastime when she is separated from Krishna again and thus immerse her in an ocean of bliss. She smiles slightly and calls her Varoru. 
hearing this, Swamini both chastises and praises Tulasi with her glances. It is a consent combined with a rebuke. Here, Lalita, Vishaka, and other Sakis are not present. Only Rupa, Tulasi, and the other Manjaris are there. There is no obstacle here to Shringar Rasa. Krishna, the personification of the erotic spiritual flavor, performing his Shringara, service of decorating Shiralika. He is overwhelmed by bliss when he touches Varuru's excellent thighs. Tulasi feels Nagara's bliss in her own heart. Blessed is the service of Shirata. What more can be attained for, for the intermediary energy of the Lord? Marginal. Huh. The individual souls in the spiritual world. This is the great gift of Mahaprabhu. Raghunadas Goswami is the object of Sriman Mahaprabhu's limitless mercy. The Lord's heart melted when he saw how fixed Raghunath was in bhajan, in prema, and renunciation. Indeed, the Lord got in Raghunath thus the embodiment of renounced Vraja He was so pleased with Raghunath that he gave himself away to him in the form of the Govardhan Shila and the Gunjamala. After all, the Lord's blessed dissension served the purpose of distributing bhakti yoga that is deep with dispassion and realization. <laughs> Tulasi's bliss knows no bounds when she sees how expertly Nagara dresses Swamini. That ocean of her spiritual bliss ever increases. Sri Haripad Shila sings, The bank of Radha Kunda is a divine, ever effulgent abode where the bees hum around the flowerful cottages of the kunjas. O oh, fortunate Gauri, golden beauty, Giridhari, the crown jewel of lovers, who was victorious over the Arista demon, sits you there 
on a jewel bedstead and decorate you there with wonderful floral ornaments. Oh, nicely tied, lotus-like girl, I will stand behind you and softly fan you with the whisk. Hundreds of waves will arise in the ocean of my this as I witness that pastime. Thus ends the verse 67, 76. Jai Sure. Thank you very much. That's amazing. If someone wants to share something. Rade, rade. <clears throat> um, there was this wonderful point that Radharani asked Tulasi, Tulsi, you don't want to serve me? And this exchange of glances. And there's so much happiness in Tulsi because she understood this was the goal. We reached the goal because Mohan is, how do you say, uh, Victory is accomplished over Mohan, actually. So, and he is serving in such a wonderful, lovely way, completely out of his mind. So actually, it's accomplished. He is fully satisfied. And of course, it is said that Tulsi can feel what Krishna feels. So she understands immediately, yes, satisfied, no need to, to do service from my side, because this is the highest Tringara done by Mohan. So no need for me now to do. And Swamini is answering with her glances, chastising, in the same time, saying, my dear Tulsi, you did a great job. <laughs> Jai Shirade. Thank you, Baba. Thank you very much. And all this conversation was actually, is hap was happening or is happening through the glances. Because in Sringaras, in this exchange of love, especially in Nivriti Nikunj, where is a Kama is in the middle and so intense, glances is important. Because through the glances, feelings are exchanging and orders are also. And we should learn also how to tune ourselves that we can understand the glances of devotees, of Gurudev, and through meditation to understand and feel the glances of our beloved Radhika. This is silent seva. And for Manjaris, it's very important to learn this silent seva. And only devotees who are sensitive, they can relish this silent seva more than with so many words, explanations, and so on and so on. When we speak, actually, this is also kind of silence, because we are not speaking anything else. Just glorifying the Radharani. 
this is also the silence. But when we finish, we are coming in the silence of our bhajan. To learn how to go deeper, because through the silence we can go deeper, not artificial silence, outside, mauna outside, no, no, no. But through the bhajan, through the heart, and glorifying our beloved Radhika. Because through the glorifying of beloved Radhika, we are actually glorifying our Gurudev. Without Gurudev, we could not be able to glorify Radhika in such a way. We are glorifying Raghunath, we are glorifying Rupa Manjari, Ananta Das Babaji, all, all, all Rasika devotees by glorifying Shimati Radharani. Because they taught us how to do it. And through their feelings, we can feel somehow, just a little bit, just a whiff of their feelings and try to say something in glorification of Shimati Radharani. for her pleasure and pleasure of her devotees. So Jai Gurudev, you are with us. <laughs> I don't know if he is listening or no, if he is resting, but he is always present. Without him, this kind of glorification will never happen especially in my life. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much, <laughs> everyone. If someone wants to add, share something. So I want to little bit share. So you mentioned the Mona. So, and also grants. Gurudeva used to say, see the sadhu. See, seeing the sadhu is important. So sometimes, uh, if we eat, like one day we want to see, uh, one day Gurudeva, so we made a book for Anandas Bhaj Maharaj, is, uh, English trans and no, uh, Japan translation. Then good, I I show Guru Dev or oh, I made this go to see Anandas Baba and, and and give it to him. But at that time Anandas Baba is not so well, so not so easy to 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 see Anandas Baba. But Guru Dev's order. So anyway, we went to. And in front of his room, <laughs> we are waiting. I don't know how many hours. And then one servant come and enter. And then, so, and then one servant get out. So at that moment, we just <laughs> enter. And then see and give the book. And why is that? Why we have to, we need to see Gurudev, we need to see Sadhu. Because through I, Masi coming, I think through I. So Radharani's Masi also coming through, you know, that, you know, they say Radha Kripa Kataksha. So like, uh, so this through I, Masi is coming. So therefore, this this uh, uh, seeing is very important. Sometimes we see in, in, in Zoom meeting, but actually, if we realize direct meeting, so so nice. One day, I, you know, one day I met Gorang Sundarappa in Vrindavan. I so happy, 
so happy. I cannot <laughs> describe you know, my happiness because I'm always in Zoom, you know, but the direct meeting is so, so sweet. Also, Mona, like uh, previous uh, our society, I was experiencing some society. They are chanting Mahamantra in loudly. But uh, Babaji Rai, they are chanting very, actually, in, say, like I say, Without, without saying, or even without moving mouth. So sometimes people asking, which chanting is better? So according to Chaitanya Charita Mrita, Kalida Stakuru told us. So loudly, loudly chanting is better because plants, or insects, as animals could do here, or in this. But why we are doing in the, in the silent chanting? I don't know the other meaning that I feel. Because we want to meditate more deeply. Goranga Sundaraji said, we want to deep in the in the in the water of Radha Kunda, actually uh, 24 7 but this water is not, to, not only water it consists of baba and feeding and also rasa <laughs> so and to 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 taste this feeling and rasa is, I, I, this is my, my feeling. It helps us to meditate more deeply. Like a manjari do, or no, actually, kinkari do. Kinkari, without saying, they could understand Radharani's feeling. Sometimes here, Munger Rajman, <laughs> many devotees feel without saying, Oh, you must be hungry. Oh, you, you need coffee. Oh, you need, you know, some massage. Without saying, sometimes <laughs> devotees, <do. laughs> they, are, they are very uh, example for Kinkari. <laughs> So this, sorry, I did it wrong. So this, I, I want to mention this kind of uh, feeling because Goranga Sundara Prabhu, as a devotee, is kind of inspired. Yeah. Thanks very much. So, so. Jiva Goswami is telling chanting loud is the best and I also know that others who are trying to meditate they try to not move the tongue while chanting I think both it depends on the situation is good but I was asking myself, when I chant loud, what actually I am distributing? If I meditate deeply, I'm in Lila Rasa. And if I chant then loudly, what I'm distributing? I think then it's very good to chant loud. If I'm in the deep meditation, then I'm distributing what I'm meditating on, right? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
Because sometimes you may say one word, but you think of something else. Then you distribute what you are thinking on, where your heart is. So, of course, I can chant loud, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. But inside, I'm meditating on my fame or whatever. Then I'm distributing this kind of consciousness. So I think it depends on the situation. I want to share these thoughts with you because I was thinking about this, you know, what is better and how to see and, you know, like this. So I think the most important thing is that we are in the meditation and then distribute the name in this meditation. Otherwise, it will have another effect, actually. Not only on us, also on others. Sorry.